Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor, and I got seven things I want to go over. You know, throughout my day, I write down notes and I stuff my pockets with paper. Then I got to get it all organized. And I want to share some really cool things with you. But uh, number one um, is that the toughest question that I ever get has to do with predicting the future. Will this help me? How long will it take before it works? Will this help my dog? Will this help my spouse? Um, when will I be better? Those are kind of hard questions. Now, in my 20 years, I've had a lot of experiences with other people with similar supplements and similar conditions and diet. So uh, sometimes I can give a good answer. Like maybe it'll take like two years to detox or maybe your cold will be gone in four days or something like that. But uh, I don't have a crystal ball, although I do have a, a disco ball. Will this supplement help your dog? Uh, yeah, it'll help your dog. The second thing is this, micronutrients. So I've had people concerned about are they getting enough vitamin A and minerals while they fast or while they're in ketosis. The answer is no, you're not intaking any minerals or vitamins while you're fasting. And in ketosis, you're getting uh, some vitamins from fats and uh, if you're doing some, you know, the proteins, etc. And you can still have a lot of produce, but you might be deficient in the greens and those micronutrients, the phytochemicals, you know, the plant-derived chemicals that are very beneficial. But that's okay temporarily. And uh, one of the healthiest things you can do is stop eating and do a fast, like for a day or five days or something like that, then get back to eating. So the point is, when you're fasting or when you're in ketosis, you have autophagy, that means cell death. The cells die and they open up and the vitamins and minerals and RNA and DNA and fats, they spill into the body and that, that all gets recycled. So it's actually important to not eat sometimes and yeah, you won't get your RDA, a vitamin C or potassium or vitamin E when you're, when you're fasting, but that's okay temporarily. So it's not that important to have uh, attention on micronutrients so much as what you might think. Now look at the US RDA, recommend, recommended daily allowance, for the macronutrients, fat, protein, and carbs. They got it wrong. So you could maybe guess that they got the micronutrients wrong too. Now the whole point is it's N equals one. N is the number of people being tested. One is you, N equals one. You're testing yourself. So as you change your diet, you pay attention. How does your body feel? When you fast, when you go into ketosis, when you're making these dietary changes, N equals one, not N equals 10,000. The USDA has to look at big groups of people, 300 million Americans or something like that. But what's the most important thing is you. So keep that in mind when it comes to micronutrients. There are days when you eat a lot of plants and you're getting a lot of micronutrients. And there's days when you're eating nothing at all because you're doing a fast, like a 24-hour fast, totally fine. You don't need that daily you know, uh, requirement of some nutrients like the FDA is saying. Okay, number three. I had a, a woman, she's been with me a couple months. She's been in and out of ketosis. She's been doing great. And um, I talked to her about consuming avocado oil. So most people are using coconut oil. And so she started using avocado oil. And one week later, she comes back into my office and she's down 10 pounds and her energy is through the roof compared to using coconut oil. So the point here is that different oils will act differently on your body. So experiment with different oils and see how your body responds. So I personally don't like coconut oil. I don't like avocados. Olive oil, good quality olive oil will grab your throat because of the plant chemicals in there. Um, but avocado oil is mild. And so recently I've been consuming three or four tablespoons for my breakfast. So I'm doing some intermittent fasting and I'm modifying the fast by having oil for breakfast. Okay, and it's been, I've had great results and she had phenomenal results with avocado oil versus the other oils. One last thing about this, when you talk about avocado oil, coconut oil, and olive oil, those are fruit oils. Okay, fruit oils, that's just a term that you need to know. Those fruit oils are very popular as opposed to other oils like seed oils or nut oils or something like that. Okay, number four, how hard is it to get off Diet Coke or Diet Pop or Diet Soda, however you call it. It's very hard for some people. I had a woman, it took her five years. I had another woman, she was unsuccessful. She would get off of it for four months or six months 
and then she has some stress and she starts drinking it again. So I think they put chemicals in the diet pop in order to make you addicted. So just stay away from that. All pop is bad, whether it's sugar based or a diet, you know, uh, artificially sweetened, it's just bad. Okay, number five, oxalates. Oxalates are uh, chemicals in your body, it's like sand. And you can see it on an MRI. And the sand will then form into kidney stones. So I had a patient recently, and he said that in an MRI, they found sand in his kidneys. So he did a low oxalate or no oxalate diet. And then one month later, his kidneys were clear. He had no sand in his kidneys. Okay, I have another patient, and he had, uh, he's autistic. His bowel movements were sandy. His stool was sandy. So they did a low oxalate diet. And then um, two months later, totally clear. So one third of autistic patients have oxalates, high oxalates in their body. So this is a, a very important uh, concept in healthcare that's really not very well known, but it should be more well known. Okay, and it's easy to take care of. And I'm putting a link below for our low oxalate diet. Now you can Google low oxalate diet and you'll see, um, they'll say no more spinach, but instead eat white bread or something ridiculous like that. So it's not, they don't promote quality food. They're just saying do no oxalates. So what I'm saying is we'll put together a low oxalate diet that's healthy and we'll I'll put it down below. Okay, number six, we got two more. When you have no gallbladder and you're trying to eat extra fat, you may have trouble. So there are two supplements that you should take and try it. And now uh, one is ox bile and the other one is bile salts. Now um, oftentimes you can find both of those in one pill. Okay, and it's easily available on Amazon or online. And if you're a patient of ours, you can buy ox bile and you can buy bile salts. And maybe both are needed for you if you have no gallbladder. Maybe you need just one and not the other. It's N equals one, you have to experiment. So the deal is, if you don't have a gallbladder, then your liver is constantly streaming a little bit of bile into the small intestine 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Whereas the gallbladder would capture that and concentrate it and then you eat fat and it squirts the bile into the small intestine to digest the fat. The bile is like an emulsifier, it's like soap on fat. It's, it emuls, it uh, dissolves it. So imagine a kitchen sink filled with water and then grease on top and you pour dish soap and it hits the water and the fat scatters, it, it goes away from the uh, soap. So that's what emulsification is like. Bile does that to the food that you eat, the fat that you eat. So now with the um, supplements, bile, uh, salts, and ox bile, you have more if you have a fatty meal, and you have less if you have a less fatty meal, and if you just snack on carrots, for example, you would not need any bile at all. So I just, this is just information that I've been gathering in my pockets, and now I'm downloading it into your brain. All right, the last one is a playlist um, that's right here. And this playlist is all my research for the last year, more than a year, on um, why people say fat is bad, and animal fat is bad, animal protein, and don't eat animals, and avoid all fats. I, I know why they say that, and I've made a series of videos throughout the last year and a half, and it seems like I'm done now. It seems like I've answered anything anybody could ever say. Like they'll say, here's a piece of research that says that, you know, this fat is bad. Well, the research is probably bad research. Okay, that's just an example. And I have many, many examples uh, that will basically debunk anybody that says that natural fats are bad or animal protein is bad. So the link has, uh, most of them are my videos. It's a playlist. And then some of the videos belong to other people. So they're, they're on that playlist. So again, this is like more than a year of me compiling information because they need to answer people's questions. And um, so I do research and then I make a video, so I've compiled all this information. So she can share that with people if they need that kind of information. If you know somebody that's sick because they're not eating enough fat or they're not eating any meat anymore, you can send them this playlist. Hopefully that'll change their mind, they get their health back. Um, so if you like this information, please give, give me a thumbs up. If you're new, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit the bell for notifications, please do that. Now, um, I know there's a generation of uh, Americans that don't subscribe to YouTube channels. Okay, if that's you, you still need to subscribe. And if you need our help specifically, uh, just go below. You can see the uh, email address, intake at the NECA.com. You can contact us, and we can help you with N equals 1, you.